Hello, my name is Mike Hatford. I'm the Fire Chief for Lemington Fire and EMS in Lemington, Maine. Today I want to show you a new Demers Ambulance. Uh, this project began about three years ago when our department decided we needed to replace an older truck that we have here. Uh, we wanted to get the latest and greatest of everything in an ambulance, but we had a limited budget that we had to do it with, being how we're a small town. Uh, but I decided to take some time and drive around the country, so I drove out to Illinois to the Horton Ambulance Corporation and toured their factory, looked at their vehicles. From there, we went to the Braun Ambulance Corporation and uh, toured their factory. was pleasantly surprised with what I saw. We, I went from there down to North Carolina, out in the western North Carolina mountains, and toured the American Emergency Vehicle Manufacturing Plant. Uh, we had a great time there. Uh, saw a lot of new innovations. Uh, from there, we went back up to uh, New Jersey, up to Menisquam, New Jersey, and toured the PL Custom Coach Factory. And they were doing uh, some things very similar to what they had done before when they produced a, the truck that we bought in 2005. The last plant that I toured uh, turned out to be the deciding factor. I went to Belial, Quebec, and toured the Demers Ambulance Company. The history had told me that uh, they'd been making ambulances for about 50 years. I was pleasantly surprised with the staff that I dealt with there. Uh, everybody was uh, very open-armed at bringing you into their factory, They're very proud of what they were doing, and they uh, gave me a tour, and really what they did, they provided me an education in safety. And so that's how we uh, started into this project, and as I'm about to explain to you, it took a lot of turns and, it, and a lot more things went into this project before we got done. And what we ended up with was not what we thought we were going to get when we started. Okay, so the first steps in this project started with sitting around the table here in the next room. Uh, I called an officer meeting one night and all of the officers of the department came in. We all sat around the table and I said, well... The old rescue one is beyond its usable life and we need to start thinking about replacing it. And so we started uh, to assign tasks to, to all the offices. Uh, everybody was gonna get, gather some information. I went to, to the uh, administration of the town, the town board of selectmen, and explained to them what we were doing, that we were gonna need to think about replacing rescue one, not this year, but what was more importantly is that we did the project right and studied it before we replaced it, so we replace it with the right thing that keeps up with us here in 2014. Uh, the next step after that was to mention this to our uh, town's budget committee so that they could know that two or three years down the line we were gonna need to make a major purchase in town to acquire a new ambulance to replace the aging one that was sitting here. The next step was to turn to national uh, publications and safety recommendations. And the publication we used the most was probably EMS World, and they keep up with all the latest in safety for ambulances. Uh, the next step that I took was to request, formally request a uh, copy of the National Fire Prevention Association guidelines for motorized ambulances. And we got that in after about a week, made copies of that for all of our offices, and we studied this from end to end. Uh, these are recommendations, they're not law, but these recommendations, make no mistake, are written in blood. Uh, people's lives were lost that brought this standard around so that we can look at things objectively and not design ambulances that are not going to protect the occupants within them. I attended a safety seminar in New York City and another one in Lewiston, Maine, given by a fascinating lady. Her name is Dr. Nadine Levick. She uh, hosts a corporation called Ambulance Safety Solutions Incorporated, and she's dedicated her life to ambulance safety and lives lost in ambulance crashes. The training she provided us was technical, and it was valuable material that told us we just can't allow our people to continue to ride in ambulances that we know are made of plywood and we know are going to fall apart if they have a major collision. And we know that in some of these ambulances, the way they're constructed, the chances for survival with a major impact is practically not there at all. Uh, so we wanted that in mind 
that we follow some basic standards that she sets forward, like uh, the one where everybody either faces forward or faces backward in an automotive industry designed seat. And people remain seat belted in the vehicles. Uh, and that is exactly how we started into this project designing this ambulance. And of course, the volunteer and per diem people who are going to be working on this ambulance were an important part of the decision making so that we knew that uh, instead of just designing an ambulance to hold supplies, we design workstations around people who provide the care with those supplies. And when you look inside of this ambulance today, you'll see that there's very specific workstations with all of the items they need right within reach so that once they sit down in that chair, the chair's in the right place, they're seat belted and they remain seat belted until that ambulance stops. Well, after we went to all of those ambulance manufacturers and toured all those plants, I probably had over a thousand slides of different views of ambulances in different uh, phases of production. After reviewing all that data, drawing all the conclusions, we got some basic pricing from each one of the ambulance companies for the, our list of standards that we need to go by here to keep our people safe. It became very apparent early on in the process that Demers Ambulance price-wise was coming in about 30% under all the Amer American manufacturers that were uh, trying to build this type of unit. It also became crystal clear that the safety seating we were asking for on the sliding rail system with proper height from the floor and associated workstations was not a capability that could be performed here in the United States currently by these ambulance providers. And at every one of the factories I went to, this is what I asked to see was safety seating, uh, workstations, uh, things designed around the attendants that work inside of these trucks and it, all these uh, American manufacturers that was definitely something that uh, they couldn't really provide for us. So uh, with all of that in mind, we chose to go with Demers. Okay, as you're looking at this truck over here, you look down towards the grill on it, you'll notice that all the uh, siren speakers here and the rumble units put down here. We've also got uh, reflective striping around the front of this truck for added safety. Uh, as you look towards the top of the truck here, there's an airfoil there. That cuts down on about 60% of the air reduction, uh, air, air force on the front of that vehicle. And uh, for the most part, all of our lights are within in that uh, module, which keeps them cleaner and is less corrosion and less resistance. As you look down at the tires, you'll notice that we don't run any hubcaps here at Lemington. That's so we can see the studs on the wheels all the time and ensure that they haven't loosened up. And we make sure that our uh, tire pressures are uh, marked on the uh, wheel wells. As we go along the back side, you'll see we included uh, diagonal striping from the National Safety Council and the NFPA recommendations. This is uh, necessary to forewarn people under inclement weather conditions. Uh, and it makes the truck much more visible to folks in intersections and crossways. As you look towards the top of the truck, we've doubled up the amount of scene lighting on it. The scene lighting is all LED technology with low energy draw. And we've gone from like 10,000 lumens on the side of the truck, we're up there to right around 60,000 lumens of light right now. Uh, I'll just go through the cabinets roughly to show you what's in them. Okay, as you look in our cabinets here, we store our vacuum mattresses and we doubled our oxygen capacity by putting a second oxygen tank into it to keep up with today's CPAP technology. We have protective helmets and gloves and that sort of thing that's located in here. When I open this next cabinet, you'll notice there's three computers lined up here. This is part of the EcoSmart idle reduction system. It reduces the amount of idling this truck does. When this truck's sitting on a scene with all of its lights on, once these computers evaluate what's going on, frequently it'll just shut the truck down and the truck will continue to operate fine. And if it senses that the voltage drops to a certain level or the heat drops to a certain level, it starts the truck back up again. That's all done automatic. The second part about the computers, uh, there's a link cord that's right here. Anytime we have an electrical malfunction on this truck, we link to the internet with our laptop computer. We connect with Montreal, 
where the Demers factory is, and they take control of the ambulance. They can turn the lights on and off up there. They do a systems analysis. They tell us where the problem is. They give us a box of spare parts in here, relays, transistors, whatever. And we go to where they tell us, we plug the part back in, and then the, the unit is all new again and running fine. Uh, kind of uh, new technology to this neck of the woods. When you open up this cabinet, you'll see we keep our stair chair here for getting people downstairs. In, the, in our other ambulances we've had, they usually jammed in a cabinet, but this one's easier to get out. We keep our flotation vests and throw ropes and whatnot in that cabinet as well. Uh, when we open up this next one, this cabinet has inside and outside access for our, all of our linen materials and spare blankets. Uh, we keep our lantern spare blankets and all of our splinting materials in this storage area here. One thing you'll notice on this truck that you don't notice on a lot of other trucks is these ventilators that are up high on the side of the truck. We have double them, double ventilators on this truck. Total air exchange on the inside of the truck can take place in about three minutes. So if you've got bad odors or whatnot in an ambulance, you flip on your exhaust vent and you can exchange that air pretty quick. As we look around the side here, we keep all of our ambulance accident equipment here. This is where we keep our spine boards, all of our spinal immobilization equipment, our auxiliary stretchers for the second patient, and all of that stuff's located quite uh, thriftily right here. Now this truck uh, with the EcoSmart technology contains four truck size batteries for the truck. Two of them are dedicated to the chassis and the OEM uh, type uh, material. The other two batteries are for the ambulance conversion in the box area. Uh, so that if uh, something was to go wrong with EcoSmart or our computer system and the lights and stuff in the back here uh, drained our electricity, we would still have fresh, uh, two fresh batteries committed just to the engine side so that that truck could still start up and drive off. So once again, four batteries in this truck. The one critical point on vehicle maintenance on a Demers ambulance with EcoSmart is that these batteries get changed out each year. And uh, the reason being, this, this truck is run by three computers. And in my mind as a fire chief, I know three computers are going to require reliable electricity behind it. And when Demers says those batteries need to be swapped out every year, that's what they mean. We've got to make sure that preventive maintenance is done to these trucks. When you look at this area right here, you open it up. All the life-saving carry-off equipment is right in here. The oxygen bags, the drug boxes, the surgical sets. Everything that we need to carry off in a hurry for life-saving gear is located there. And our battery box is down below. I'm sitting here in the uh, workstation one. This is the paramedic workstation one. The paramedic that's going down the road taking care of the patient here traditionally will be putting this on. And now we have talk, talk around capabilities between myself and the driver. Just You can almost whisper in this thing and uh, we'll have uh, capabilities of talking to our driver at all times. Now I'm, sit, I'm seated here right on the patient's left side and I want you to get an idea of what we can do here to get in position. This seat slides from front to back. When I pull the side rail, I can turn this way, or I can turn this way, and I can go forward and backward on this. So wherever I need to get to start the IV or to work on the patient, I can pretty much do from this seat. The other manufacturers that we've watched, the big difference between them and this and the Demers company is Demers has their uh, own trademark on this particular seating system and the reason being it's only four inches off the floor. Many of the others that try to duplicate this, they're up over this high off the floor and that would put you at this height from the patient so you'd have to be uh, bending over all the time. Now if we had to put a second patient in here, this net over here drops down this defibrillator moves and this seat would drop down so that the stretcher goes right over this area.
Now as you look at the equipment pod over here for the primary attendance seat, you can set your computer here and type while you're going into the hospital. All of our intravenous stat material for starting an IV line on a patient is located right in this drawer. This lockup drawer that you see down below, this opens up. I pull this out and all of my drugs are right there that I need. The out of drug box meds and my narcotics are right there to administer the patient. As you look at this defibrillator stand, our defibrillator will go out here. It'll enter any position. And if all of a sudden I need this to go into a house, all I do is pull two straps. And this is totally mobile to run into a house to uh, treat uh, a cardiac event. So that's workstation number one. Over here in workstation number three, which we've always called the attendant chair, basically within reach of all of this is all your oxygen supplies, your resuscitators, all these supplies are up here, controls are here, suction supplies are in here, everything we need for obstetric supplies and our Doppler uh, unit is in here. Your controls up here for your lights and heat. On the other wall over there at uh, workstation one, you've got the same controls for your overhead lighting and your heat. Uh, over the tops of both of the side seats, you've got all your glove selections. Okay, here we are in the back of the truck, and you're watching me off the front camera. As you can see, uh, you've got pretty good visualization. You can see what's going on back here. You'd definitely be able to see your patient okay. Uh, but that camera, just if we're alone here with a patient in the back, this gives us a second set of eyes on the patient to witness what's going on. And in this day, of, uh, day and age of liability and whatnot, uh, it's important that we have two people watching over each other. Uh, and everything that we do. I mean, we work in teams of two for a reason. It takes two people to do the job, at least. Uh, so anyway, the camera system is an important feature that we had installed here. It's pretty much a standard as far as the MERS is, is concerned. They put this out in most of their trucks. Yeah. You'll see there's a warming cabinet on the top. When we open up that cabinet, we have warm IV fluids and warm blankets that are stored up in this area. So if we bring a patient that's fallen through the ice, for example, in the winter in here, it's nice to have some warm blankets to put on them. you got some right there. These other two cabinets here are part of the carry-off equipment. So our emergency surgery sets there, and our drug box and our suction unit that's portable is over there. Uh... Backup intravenous supplies, needles and syringes are kept in this cabinet, and the remainder of the carry-off equipment is kept right down here. I'll turn the, the seat to the side here, and down here you'll see our printer for our computer so we can print our run forms here, and our refrigerator that's kept on the truck is right over here. That's for refrigerated IV fluids if we had to initiate uh, care for a uh, return of uh, circulation patient from a cardiac arrest. Uh, this corner cabinet is where we keep spare pillows and spare child seat. This uh, workstation three seat also pulls apart and you've got a child seat built into the inside of it. So this is workstation three. And workstation two is over here on the uh, driver's side. Once again, all the same equipment. You got a radio set over here, shops control, trash control. Your gloves are up above. When you're seat belted in this seat, I gotta just pull the handle. Then we can turn to the side. We can face around back, so you can face that way, or face around to the front. You have to put the seat back to do this. So you got proper seating here. 
the position we want our people in when we go to the hospital is facing forward or facing backward. Because we know if we have a major impact, this is the only way we're going to survive it. Remaining seat belted, remaining sitting down, keeping our patients properly belted with shoulder straps in place. These seats here are approved by the automotive industry. Uh, the seat belting systems approved by the automotive industry, which means they've been crash tested. So uh, to wrap it up here, uh, to everybody that sees this video, here's what I want to. Here's the message I want to send. Uh, first off, those folks up there at Demers Ambulance, they really know what they're doing. They're very friendly people. They're honest, and more importantly, they'll tell you what they can't do. Uh, they're not going to do things that they haven't designed and safety tested for. Uh, this ambulance package is ideal for total patient care. For providing care today with today's paramedic standards, all everything's without our fingertips in here. And uh, in my last 43 years of riding in ambulances, I can honestly tell you that this is the safest and most user-friendly configuration that I've ever worked with in the back of an ambulance. Uh, to sum it up, it's a good price. It's comfortable to work out of. All the ALS is user-friendly. All that ALS gear is user-friendly. The defibrillators are in the right place. The needles are in the right place. Everything's ready to go. Uh, it's quiet going down the road. It's very clean and easy to clean and easy to keep sanitary. And it's designed for a cold climate. One of the best parts of touring the Demers factory was meeting some of those folks from British Columbia and Alberta that uh, buy ambulances there on a regular basis. And as we know, those folks up close to the Arctic Circle uh, have to keep their ambulances warm. This truck right here is designed to keep you warm. It's also designed to keep you cool in the summer. That's important when you've got a person that's on the worst day of their life sitting on a stretcher in there. And they need to be taken care of, and they're counting on you to do the right thing right the first time. Uh, this truck enables us to do it. I absolutely believe in this concept. And any of you folks here in the state of Maine or in New England that want to hear about this truck or how it's working out for us, you pick up the phone and you call Lemington Fire and EMS. We'll put up a slide here on the end and we'll show you the numbers to contact us. Or you email us. You want to come down here, we'll take you out for a ride in it. You can sit in the back of it. You can see for yourself how easy it is to do procedures out of this truck. I believe in it. I'm basing this on, like I said, working over 40 years in uh, backs of ambulances throughout the country. I've worked on both sides of the country. Uh, this is a good one. Uh, and to you folks up at Demers, thank you very much for doing a job well done. Uh, our salutes to you.